Uh, I want to talk to you about runtime type checking in TypeScript. Um, uh, basically, for two reasons. Um, one of which is it's like a, a, a commonly requested feature, actually, for, for the TypeScript project. Um, and also because I recently ran into uh, uh, a case, or several cases, where I really uh, wanted to use uh, this feature. So, um, first of all, let's see why we would even need such a thing. Um, in order to do that, I'll take you back to like the beginning, beginning of things. Um, uh, basically. Uh, back to when we had mostly static HTML web pages and, and JavaScript, which was just a thing that you, you also had to animate menus and maybe draw some snowflakes during Christmas on your, on your uh, web pages. Um, well, you couldn't really call them apps, and because of this, code quality guarantees was like works on my machine, upload through FTP, and let's not worry about it anymore. Um, as time went on, however, uh, we started building richer and richer uh, internet uh, uh, and web experiences, and um, actually quality guarantees started to matter. We had to do something to ensure that our application was working, and it kept working, uh, uh, even through uh, uh, the various changes and refactors and stuff we did. Um, so, well, we did what uh, uh, everyone would do, write tests, making lots of unit tests, and lots of them for, for JavaScript. Because, yeah, it's a, it's a dynamically typed language, and, and especially if your projects start growing, you, you get functions, and you don't know which or, or where this function is being called from, and you don't know what it's going to be receiving as, as, as arguments. It could be anything. Um, so basically, you have to test for everything. That means writing a lot of tests and a lot of them silly because, yeah, a lot of the things you test for will never really happen in real life. But you gotta test them anyway, just in case. Um, of course, this takes a lot of time. So uh, it's like years, a few years back, we uh, got TypeScript, and TypeScript actually offered us a way to. Uh, uh, at least within a project, ensure that uh, we know about the, the the things that can go into a function and uh, about uh, uh, call signatures and return types and things like that. And this makes sure that uh, uh, we we can, if like correctly used, uh, give at least some guarantees about the code quality and about the code base. So we can. Reduce a few of these uh, unit tests, especially the really silly ones. We can just uh, uh, remove those when uh, when using TypeScript. So, um, yeah, TypeScript offers us what's called uh, static type checking for uh, basically JavaScript. And static type checking is the type of type checking that happens compile time, so before your application runs. Um, and this is this is very important because then when your application is actually running it isn't offering you anything anymore because well TypeScript cannot actually run it's it's just JavaScript in the end um, though in, in in theory if you use it correctly and completely throughout your entire application its dependencies its services whatever it's using it should offer complete type correctness of your uh, uh, application, but this, well, obviously, we should that, uh, yeah, it has to be a perfect world, and we just don't live in a perfect world. We have services that don't have any uh, uh, TypeScript typings that they offer. We have uh, uh, dependencies that offer very poor, if any, uh, TypeScript support, and you have to rely on, on yourself. Um, so this obviously causes uh, a lot of bugs in your application. Uh, you expect something to happen, but it, it doesn't. I mean, even though maybe even TypeScript says so, it's just that uh, uh, it isn't happening that way. Uh, yeah, just as an example, uh, uh, at the folder I was uh, I'm working on a, on a uh, REST API service, and uh, this one is it's, it's linked to a, a mail service, which is it's, it's like separately done in a queue and things like that. And um, 
somebody was fooling around with 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 the mail server. So it's, it's a component that we rarely rarely touch. So I'm not I'm not checking it uh, uh, every time. Um, either way, the, the configuration changed, and and all of a sudden uh, uh, the mail server wasn't able to authenticate anymore. It just wasn't working, and we got like weird errors, like uh, authentication errors being returned through the through the REST API. It was like, oh, what the hell's going on? Like, we didn't change anything. Uh, <laughs> It turns out, uh, yeah, something did change, just not in the project, and we weren't actually checking the configuration that was coming in, we're just assuming that it was correct. And this brings me to, uh, uh, yeah, basically the, the, the common problem areas that uh, uh, we see when using TypeScript, but you still get uh, these, these bugs or issues where something is just not as uh, what you think it is. Um, and basically you can drill them down to, to two problems. One of them is a, is a type assumption where, um, well usually this happens because something uh, receives a generic any type. It's like an HTTP request. Yeah, it returns something. It's a promise uh, with, with any, so you can turn it into any. And then usually people say, oh, well then it's, a, it's probably a list of to-dos. Yeah, until it's not. Um, or a type assertion where you basically say, shut up TypeScript, I do know better, and uh, just accept that this is a promise of uh, results. Uh, well, if somebody does a database migration, it may well have changed. So, runtime type checking. Um, this would actually offer us something to, to check whatever data is, is, is coming in and make sure this is correct before we uh, actually like, assume it's, uh, uh, it's the type we want. Um, suddenly, this is, this is not a goal of the TypeScript project. So every time an issue is opened on the TypeScript GitHub page with a uh, run type type checking, uh, it's, it's quickly dismissed because it's just not something they want to do. Um, and this is for, for, for many, many reasons. One of them is just that it would be too heavy to run everywhere in your JavaScript app because JavaScript is uh, uh, it's dynamically typed and it's weakly typed. Um, basically, you have no, no assurance anywhere that something is of, uh, of a certain type. Um, and doing a runtime type check everywhere in your app would make uh, or would turn it into like checking every every at the start of every function. Uh, is this argument what I uh, what I want it to be? If not, then throw an error or do something else. If you do that everywhere, it's going to be horribly slow. So this is this is just not something that is realistic as a solution. Though, if we think about it, um, we only really need to type check uh, a few things. Not everything. We can use TypeScript for everything within our application, make sure that is uh, absolutely correct. But um, whatever is coming into our app, so like at the boundary of our application, we do want to check. And uh, usually, this is just like this is just only a few places in your uh, in your application most of the time that this happens. That unstructured data or structured data that does not have a type uh, enters your application and you want to be able to, to, to check or you want to be uh, checking this before you start using this. So this kind of like uh, offers us, yeah, uh, a way to check this which is a little, a little bit more lightweight, a little bit more realistic uh, uh, when running in the production app. Actually, Probably most of you already know this concept because it's called input validation, and there are already uh, uh, very popular libraries like Joy or AJV that that do this for us. So um, let's see how that would work. This is just a very simple example uh, um, using Joy, where we define an interface uh, and we say, okay, so this input uh, has a numbers property, which is a list of numbers, and it may have a text property which should be a string. And then obviously we still need to write the validator, which is, well, largely the same as you can see, or pretty much exactly the same, just with the joy syntax around it. This is, this is terrible. I mean, 
as developers, we are trained to not repeat ourselves. <laughs> Basically repeating ourselves here. So what can we do about this? Well, there's a, a project called IOTS um, that can combine these uh, uh, validations and TypeScript types for you. Um, it's based on a, on a codec, um, and this codec can uh, or offers you the ability to encode, decode, validate, uh, even like over new type guards for your own types. Um, for functional programming uh, lovers, it depends on the either monad from FPTS. Um, anyone not know what a monad is? Going to nice. Play that. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That saves me some time. Um, anyway, the either monad basically it, has, it offers you two options. Uh, uh, the value contained within the monad is either a left or a right. Um, in case of uh, a left, it would be a wrong uh, value, so it would be like, containing a list of errors. In, in, in the case of uh, IOTS, in the case of right, it would be uh, the actual data that was validated. Um, so, how does that look? Uh, Basically something like this, um, and this is the same type that we defined uh, before, the same interface, and we have a list of numbers and uh, an optional uh, string. Just ignore the, the intersection uh, uh, thing for now. For, for now. Um, and then we see that we can extract the, the actual TypeScript type uh, uh, by using type off, and then again type off, it's a little bit weird, but just it works, <laughs> and it offers you this like design time. So you're you're building your type, and in your editor you can already already see what the type is going to be in, in, in TypeScript. So this is like that is super nice. Um, and then obviously you can use it as a as a validator. So uh, uh, for instance, we, we can input a correct uh, uh, object with a bunch of numbers and some text, we decode it, and then it will be. Uh, the right side of the either monad containing the value that we just uh, entered. Or we can say, well, let's put a wrong value in there. Let's say uh, our numbers is now a string. And then we get the left side with uh, probably one error, but it could be multiple. Um, yeah, so about this, <laughs> this weird syntax, uh, basically this is required because of the way TypeScript works. There's, there's, uh, if you want to like programmatically, dynamically define these types, there's, there's no way around this. You have to do some form of uh, uh, structuring like this. Uh, basically, it, it, it works. It's very similar to uh, set theory. If any of you remember that from your days at university, or <coughs> yeah, you have unions, you have intersections uh, uh, between types, and this is the way that you can. Uh, uh, Build your your own type. So, uh, just for like uh, reference, I, I put a list here with their uh, TypeScript uh, uh, or with the resulting TypeScript type. So we have a literal, which would be like the, the one value, and only that value will validate. Uh, a tuple, which is a we all know what a tuple is. Um, the partial object, which is basically the same thing as the partial type in TypeScript. Um, the union which is the same as the pipe operator, and the intersection, the same as the ampersand. Um, yeah, so this, this API can be a little bit quirky, but it, you'll get used to it, and it will save you tons of time. Um, of course, just type checking isn't enough for a validation library. Uh, sometimes you have more specific requirements, like Take a Dutch zip code, for instance. Um, this is, for a, as a type, it's just a string. But you cannot say input just any string. Um, it has to meet a certain uh, structural requirement that is, in this case, checked with a regular expression. Um, and you can, you can do this in ISS rather easily. You can just refine any given type, so the ones that you get out of the box, but also the ones that you define yourself. And you can add additional validation uh, uh, steps for them. So in this case, we just test the, uh, for the regular expression. If it's truly, then it's a zip code. Um, yeah, so. 
Validation would still be, well, pretty much useless if you cannot get a solid error message out of it. You'll still end up investigating uh, uh, why it went wrong and it will still cost you tons of time. Uh, so, uh, IOTS also has you covered there. Uh, it contains, by default, uh, a path reporter. Uh, this path reporter is actually, it's, it's, it's rather complete. I'd say in probably 99% of the cases, that will, this will be plenty to give you a sufficient error message so you know exactly what's going on. Um, uh, as an example, uh, this is the same input type that we used before, uh, but now we're missing the, the numbers array. So uh, what we then get back, it's not completely shown. Let's see. Yeah, what we will scroll. Um, it says invalid value undefined supply to, and then your complete type, and then the path to the value that was wrong, and the type that it should have been. This is, well, I think very clear. I know exactly what's going on. Um, yeah, so, uh, it's, it's already time to wrap up. Um, don't type check everything, because that's just gonna, yeah, waste CPU cycles for everyone and kill the performance of your app and horrible. Um, instead, just validate uh, and type check whatever comes into your app and let TypeScript deal with the rest. Um, also, don't repeat yourself, use IOTS. Thank you.